For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach give us that order Prepare slaughter For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put this work in Hamashiach give us that order America, right? America. Damn it. America. America. Um, America, how does it look now? Majority of what type of people here? It's a mixing pot, but we see a lot of what type of people here? You say demographically wise. A lot of white, right? He knows it. A lot of white people. That's how America looks. So if I want to determine how America used to look, then I need to look at the geographic locale, which you said. So America is full of just white people. But if we go over 400 years ago, was it like that? It was Native American. You see that? So I hear what you're saying by using geographic locale, but I don't know if that's a standard we can really sit on because just like he just said, it was Native American over 400 years ago. Matter of fact, we had a little map somewhere that showed how much the land has changed over time. But with that, it was because the land was taken over. Right. So that's how history works. People go in and conquer lands, they take over, and those places are not... Like, let's talk about a modern day version of that. You had um, Russia went into Ukraine, right? Took that took that, you see what I'm saying? Hey, this is my house, you get out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it could change any time, we just need to have the model. So it might not be the best idea to try to look at geographic locales as someone looks. What else can we use? Okay, so descriptions from like texts. There you go, descriptions from texts. I feel like that's probably the most accurate because that's something that's not gonna change. Especially this Bible. They said it's one of the most accurate books when, when tried and tested throughout time. So what we have to do is go through this book to determine what he feels like. Let's get the revelation. Let's start at 12. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And so it's John the Revelator, right? We're in Revelation, book of Revelation. You guys believe in that book? Let's go. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man. John Ritter has a vision. He said, I turned and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one stood like the son of man. Who's the son of man? Who knows? He knows it. And this guy's on it, man. Yeah, yeah. Where did I study one of them? We're at church camp. Huh? We're, we're at church camp. Church camp. Oh, this is your church camp? Yeah, okay. Yeah. He's on it, man. He's like the MVP or what? He's on everything right now. Yeah. He's locked in. So it says, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one stood like the son of man. So we know this is talking about Christ, right? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Yeah, I was talking about his apparel, right? He wore a garment. And this garment went down to the foot, right? Probably like a Roman robe. A Roman robe? It would have been a deep red. Yeah. yeah. But but nevertheless, like a robe, right? A garment that would cover down to the foot, right? Go ahead. And girt about the path with a golden girdle. And he was girt about the path with a golden girdle because you have to hold up, right? Like a belt. Like this was more like like a kind of like a like a wrestling federal championship belt. You know what I mean? One of those like a cow would have a big buckle, right? He was girt about the girdles, but go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it says the hairs on his head, right? Color white texture was like wool, right? Oh. That's the description of the hairs because you can only see so much, so we gotta go off what is visible. So like you got a hat, you can only see your hair because it sticks out. Then when you raise it, we get to see it. So if we, if we look at the description that's depicted, right? The comment, we all know what Jesus looks like. It's over there. Would you say the hairs in his hair are white and it looks like wool? Why is that what we say it looks like? Are you telling me? I'm just going by the standard that America creates. We get so many people, right, sir, that come up here and say, that's not, that's not true. They, and they tell us that's what Jesus looked like. So I think it's like that because this is the standard that's been pushed throughout the earth since, since it was implemented, right? There's no other images we know besides that. This is the only time now we're going into text to see if that image coincides with it. But I agree with you. Why is it the image? Obviously someone had an agenda and wanted to push this image. I'm saying you're reading the Revelation, right? This is Revelation to Revelation. Because they asked a question. The question was, how do we identify how Christ looked like? We first tried to use geographic locale. We then determined geographic locale is not the best, especially when you're dealing with over time. Because just like America, right, he has the flag on his back. America does not look like it looked like 400 years ago. You see what I'm saying? So, using geographic locale is not always the best. 
So then the next thing we concluded, right? And uh, this member from you guys, I'm pretty sharp. He goes, well, we have to use some type of ancient text or some type of document, right? Or documentation to try to determine a description. So that's what we did we to next. Well, You're not asking a question saying, well, why do they have this image? I would have to ask you the same thing because we're starting to find out. It's not matching what's in the text, which we all determine here. It's probably the next best thing to go to. Since you're about to My conclusion is that the Revelation of John, the of Patmos, was being revealed to him. Right. similar to a dream. In a vision, right. And when I go to the Gospels, where Jesus is described as a man. Oh, okay, so I think we... Don't. Does anyone here think that Christ was an alien? Huh? Alien? Alien in what church? I mean, an alien being. Because he's oh, saying, he's saying, why don't we go to the gospel to, to make sure that he's a man? I think we all agree that he was a man, right? I agree. You know what I mean? I don't think we need to go there to determine if he's a man or not. But if that's where you want to go, you know what I mean? I, I, he definitely was a woman. Go ahead, get it. Book of Romans chapter one and verse three concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So he's made of the seed of David, right? A man, so he's mankind. So that, so we went there to determine that. Does that help with your inquiry? Oh uh, yeah, that's, that's oh, non-refutable. Okay, so now we keep going. Now we gotta see what type of man was he that walked the earth, right? We can't use geographic locale, we determine that, so now we're going into the description. We're using the revelator, right? Because he was revealed. And this is why, why I'm saying we're going here because how does the most high appear to anyone most of the time when you reveal something? It's usually through a vision, right? Or through a dream. So we, we have to do that, right? Well, why, why not use the, the life of the Probably with the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not understanding that question. What do you mean? Yeah, why do we need to go any further than the life of Jesus Christ? Like after he dies. In order to figure out certain things, you gotta go further. Like for example, what are we trying to figure out? Yeah, I think so. You came in kind of late. I think so. You're, you're kind of like. Well, I got a question. Why does it, why does it matter kind of what 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 race he was? I mean, we know he was the son of God, and we like we know what he did. We're believers, but like, why does it matter what skin color he is? As long as he because of was because savior. it matters because of the lie that's told about him. If there is no lie, then there is no conversation. Okay. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. So it's like this. If, if we're going around telling lies about Jesus and say, Jesus was a seven-foot green alien, wouldn't you guys say, that's not the Jesus that I understand and I serve and that I, and that I you know, pray to? Because the lie is told, the truth has to be established. If the Bible speaks about the description and it's contrary to the common description of, of, of that guy over there, which literally there was a whole political plan and, and a propaganda plan behind that image being pushed. So when we understand the history of it, it becomes very much so a, a, a valid and a relevant discussion. See what I'm saying? What was you about to ask the question? Yeah. yeah um, this is your people right here. Besides, like, I'm not sure we, any of us here believe that he was a white, the Western American man. I think he was a Nazarene born in Jerusalem. He was born in Bethlehem. Out of the city of David. Right. Why? So. What's the dilemma here? What do you mean, what's the dilemma? We don't believe in that. We don't believe that he's a white American. Well, if, I, think, I think it's beautiful that you don't, but there are millions. I think, I think the majority of the Christian faith believe that that is Jesus Christ. People walk by us all the time saying, why did you put horns on Jesus? And our question is, who said that that's Jesus? So if you guys have that understanding, then I think that the Bible camp is actually working, right? So that's a good thing, but most of the world believes that. But well, what about the desire to, with a little bit of pure heart, to show the life of Christ, and they happen to use, you know, a, a graphic in Sunday school that shows, you know, a white man with long brown hair and a beard. Would you argue that that is like, it may be simple because that's not culturally accurate. But culturally, it, it, now here's the thing. When we start to be meticulous with our words and find the right politically correct word to use rather than just say it's a lie. Is a lie a sin? Are we yes, a, no. a lie is a sin, so if you tell a lie, then it's a lie. Somebody get that a little eleven leavens the whole lot. You guys ever heard that before? Yeah. Right? When you're 
uh, making bread and you're kneading the bread, it doesn't take much of a leavening agent to make that bread rise, right? And when, when you look at the ancient practice and the ancient culture of the Israelites where they practiced and followed and celebrated the Passover, which Jesus Christ did, seven days following the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Could they just put a smidge, just a little tiny bit of leaven in the bread and still be in accordance as God described? Absolutely not, because they were commanded to not put leaven. They have to eat unleavened bread. So when the Bible speaks about a little leaven, leavening the whole lump, all it takes is one lie. 99% truth, 1% lie. Is that the truth or is it a lie? I think that, that's taking that, that verse out of context. Well, well, if I'm misunderstanding it, then give me the correct understanding. Of a little leaven, leavens the whole lump. You're not referring to unrighteousness, that's cold words. Right, so so what is he saying? What what about unrighteousness that it takes a little bit of unrighteousness that can pervert and pollute the whole thing, correct? Remind me, what church is he talking to? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do you do you guys do you guys feel like do you do you feel like it matters what church he's talking about? We're talking about the, the, the idiom or the saying that he's using, right? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. You said it's talking about righteousness. I don't dispute that. But what's the give me the understanding of the parable or of the saying? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Explain it. What does that mean? A little bit of it, it will spread throughout. If you, there if can you, be none. it can be what? There, there can be none. There can be none unrighteousness. Yeah. So I'm saying, according to the, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the true testament of Jesus Christ, there can be none lies. That's we right. have to speak according to the word. No, if I could share just a few scriptures with you guys, so out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, right? You got that, John 7? Bring it up. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 38. Bring it out. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is why it's important for Christ out of his own mouth in his time to make us such a statement. He that believes on me, as the scripture hath said. So like you said, somebody could go and tell the life of Jesus Christ, but they decide to use this outlandish image like that. Does that now pervert the message or pervert the ministry that somebody is trying to preach the life of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Because you're not believing on him as the scripture have said. Uh, you got that John 8? Very, very next chapter, go ahead. Look at John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Is the lie going to make you free? Is believing on a lie going to make you free? No. Everything is hung on the truth of Christ and the knowledge of Christ according to what the scriptures have said. So again, that's the only time where it becomes relevant. What do you guys say is the gospel? What's, what's you guys' understanding of the gospel? Because that's really where I'm here to preach, the gospel of Jesus Christ, right. that good news. Well, well, I'm going to have to share, but what, what, like, what, what do you guys say the gospel? So you're just going to take my question, say, no. throw that away, and then no, make no. me answer yours first. Oh, you have the microphone, what, though. Right, so that's what I'm saying. We're having a discussion. What is you guys' understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because that's what we're here to do, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Michael, you didn't make it. It seems like what the signs say it's not the gospel. No, 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 no. That sign is to be. Remember what? Uh, what was it? Will Ferrell? He says. He says. What is he? Why is he saying that? He said it's provocative. That's definitely a provocative sign to bring people up. It's relevant, but that's not what we're about. Here. That's not all what we're about. We're here for truth. And again, most importantly, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that Jesus Christ brought into the world with His life, with His death, burial, and resurrection. What's you guys understanding of the gospel? Exactly. What? His death, burial, and resurrection? All right, get um, Luke, Luke 4. Let's, 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 you got that, Isaiah? Bring it out. So Luke is saying, Luke chapter 4, and verse 17. Bring it out! And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. Esaias is Isaiah, right in the Greek. Go ahead. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. The gospel, right? Go ahead. To the poor, Go ahead. he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, uh -huh. to preach deliverance to the captives, uh -huh. and recovering of sight to the blind. Is everybody poor, brokenhearted, captive, and blind? Want to do a pen around? Can you show me that in the Bible? That through sin, everybody is poor, captive, brokenhearted, and blind. No, 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 I'm saying, can you go into the Bible and show me? You're saying it's just metaphoric? You're saying like physically blind, literally blind? Anything. Even if you say it's metaphorical, go into the Bible and show me that everybody is metaphorically blind, poor, captive, and broken hearted. Crippled by sin, yes. I'm not 
I hear you. I'm saying, biblically, can you show that to me? Can you demonstrate that in the Bible? We all agree with what you're saying. You got me? Because okay. outside of the sign, there's a, there's still a lot more lies that are told out in the right? And we would take the position that all mankind is not poor, brokenhearted, captive, and blind. Say it again. You said, wouldn't it be useful to share the gospel and not a lie about the gospel? Yeah. You're uh, I'm, lies. You said I'm advertising lies? Yes. Right. Because there are lies that are out there and we want to establish the truth. We just read that in John 8 and 32. I got the That scripture. you shall know the truth and that. the truth shall make you free. Yes. So if the truth is important, that means we have to demonstrate where the lie is and then establish what the truth is. Why don't you nope. start with the truth? Why because then the people wouldn't know the lie. But you're focusing so much on the, the lie. How? But How are you telling me what I'm focused on? I'm saying in the sequence of the conversation, we establish what the lie is. If we all can acknowledge what the lie is or that it is a lie, then we can go into what the truth is. But if you guys believe that the lie is the truth, see what a dialogue opens up? Okay, here's the thing. Gospel, is it to everyone? Is it to all mankind? Okay, according to Jesus Christ, the gospel is to the poor, the brokenhearted, the captive, you see, and, and the captive, and the blind. Everyone. So I would like for somebody, it's a lot of you guys, somebody would have to have a scripture. He said he was going to get it for me eventually. Is there anyone else, right? Is there anyone else that can go into the scriptures, that can go into the text and show that everyone is poor, blind, Brokenhearted and in captive. You want all four of those together? I'm saying anything. Okay. That all mankind. Romans, Go ahead. Romans 7:23. But I see in my members another law waging against war, the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. That's Paul. I agree with everything that you just said. That's Paul. That's one man. It didn't say everyone. But watch this though. Watch this. I want to show you guys something. Give me Romans 11. Give me Romans 11 from the top. I'm gonna show you something. Right? Because it's, I'm glad that you brought that up about Paul. He clearly says that. But let's see what Paul says in Romans 11. Why did he leave? I thought we had a, a good conversation about what the gospel was supposed to be. Right? We're just talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Read. Let's look at Romans 11. Yeah, from the top. From the top. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. This is Paul saying that he's an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. Read. Of the tribe of Benjamin. And he even tells you his tribe for the tribe of Benjamin. Guess what? The Israelites are blind. The Israelites are brokenhearted. The Israelites are in captivity. The Israelites are poor. Are you saying that they're all blind metaphorically or physically? Uh both. Right? They're all blind. Like 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 it's it's not a metaphorical blindness, but it's it's literal it's a literal blindness, meaning God is showing them something and it's almost as if their understanding is, is gone. Uh well Physical would be, I cannot see anything. I cannot see, but there. no, no, but here's the thing. I would argue that it is a physical blindness, more of a mental, from a mental standpoint, because something is literally being shown to you, and you you can't understand it. They cannot get it. Right? But okay, I'm, I'm not arguing whether it's physical or metaphor, regardless. These things pertain to Paul and Paul's people. Paul just told you he's an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. So when we go into the Bible, I'm just waiting for you guys or somebody to show me that that's all mankind. You show me that it's one man, and I agree with you a thousand percent. I just want to show that that's all mankind. Wait, wait, wait. What's the point of like... You guys keep trying to jump to the end, and the whole point is, the point is, if you guys say that those that are blind, broken, hearted, captive, and poor, is all mankind, just go into the Bible and show it. Yeah, so he's saying, he's saying that you guys gospel, are, it's, the it's, gospel it's, it's, is only for the blind broken-hearted to As told by Jesus Christ. Do we have to read it again? And so and so he's saying that we need to find a verse in the Bible that says this the gospel is for all mankind. No, 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 no. That that all mankind all fits mankind. the description exactly. of who Jesus Christ said the good news is for. Where in the Bible does it say don't fit everyone? Is it saying that blind can mean that like they're not seeing God showing them? Everybody who doesn't believe in Jesus isn't seeing God showing them, right? I'm gonna show you guys, watch. Uh Matthew 15 and then Matthew 10. Exactly. It, no, I don't believe that. No. What do you think it means? The, the literal captivity of the children of Israel went into as a result of them being wicked and disobedient to God. 
read about you read about that in all of the precursor scriptures that talks about Christ and what he was going to come and do as he walked this earth to be persecuted, died, buried, and resurrected. Matthew 15. This is the words of Jesus Christ. It's a red letter. Go ahead. This is Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 21. Bring it out. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. Real quick, would you guys say that this woman of Canaan is blind and captive, poor and broken hearted? Because she pertains to the gospel, right? She has access to the gospel, correct? This Canaanite woman. Would anybody dispute that this Canaanite woman has access to the gospel? I've heard like three lines. I don't know yet. <laughs> she's a Canaanite woman. She's a part of humanity. So you guys' answer should be yes. She. Thank you. Yeah, this stuff is easy. When you try to when you try to jump ahead and still follow along, that's where you get confused. This is a woman that you guys feel like pertains to the gospel because she's a part of humanity, right? So let's just keep reading. Go ahead. And cried unto him, saying, "To him is Jesus." She cried unto Jesus, saying, "What?" Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She acknowledges Jesus Christ as the Lord, right? As the son of David, right? That's important for salvation, correct? Let's see how it follows. Go ahead. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, uh -huh. but he answered her not a word. What did he just do? If I say, hey, what, what is that in your hand? Is that a Bible? Or you just look at me. What are you doing? You're ignoring or uh, you're ignoring me. Yeah. Jesus didn't answer her, not a word. Go ahead. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Why is Jesus not ministering the gospel unto her? Why is he not saying, Thank you, my child. I'm glad you acknowledge me as the Lord and Savior. I'm glad that you acknowledge all of these things. You know what? Salvation is unto you. Go and be saved. He didn't say that. Watch this. Hold on. He didn't say this. But then he turns around and his disciples turn around. Watch this. And, and his disciples turn around and say, get this woman away from us because now she's crying after us. Go ahead. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ out of his own mouth says, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How do we turn around and make that all man come? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, you have to understand something. I've read this. I know what it says. You can't take what is there and ignore it to try to show something else. So you have to read it all. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. If I haven't gotten there, how do you accuse me of ignoring it? Well, because you just said, you just said that we are taking, like, you said, how does it apply to everyone? No, 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 I didn't. Let's, I want you to hear me carefully. I said, if Jesus Christ, out of his own mouth, says, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, how do we, as the readers and the people learning about Jesus, make it about everyone? You said it's exclusive? I believe that the gospel is exclusive. The gospel is for the... Listen. Hold on. Jesus Christ out of his own mouth says the gospel is for the brokenhearted, the blind, the poor, and the captive. I don't, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, ma'am. I'm saying when we read the Bible, it's, it, here's my thing. Do I just take what you say about it or do I take the words of Jesus Christ? I take the words of Jesus Christ. So that's all I'm saying. We're trying to re read the words of Jesus Christ and I'm asking a question to say, how does these things apply to everyone? And nobody can answer that. Okay. I'm going to take my students and I'm responsible for it. I thought we were discussing it. Verse 28 says, Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. Right. And her daughter was still instant. Right. Oh. Wait, 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 no, no, wait, wait, wait. What does that mean? He didn't ignore her. He answered her. He didn't, he clearly, out of your, oh, you guys just heard it when we read it that he ignored her. But then he yeah, answered, then he answered No, no, listen, listen, listen. With her, with her persistence, he granted her whatever it is that she requested. Is that salvation? I'm asking you. For, for everybody should be able to showcase. That is salvation. Okay. Right. So how? If Jesus Christ says, I'm only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are the lost sheep? The house of Israel. Out of his own mouth, he says the lost sheep is the house of Israel. Well, who are those people to you? What does that mean? The 12 children. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Who's the new covenant with? 
No, no, no. Who, who is it made to? From Jesus to who? Okay, you guys are reading. Go to Hebrews 10. Thank you. Let's go to Hebrews. Go. That's Hebrews 8. Excuse me. Hebrews 8 and, Je and Jeremiah 31. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. We're going to we're gonna go to all of them. Don't worry about it. We, we, don't have, we don't have any reason to run from anything. It's just that as you guys want us to answer your questions, you definitely got to answer ours because we're literally reading the Bible. Right? We're literally reading the Bible. So here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like what the brother just said. It's a good learning experience for your students that... Uh, First Peter three fifteen always be ready to give an answer of the hope that's within you with meekness and fear, right? And that's the apology. This is this is important. So it actually helps the students, right? Instead of I don't think you guys are reading what's correct. So when we read the Bible and read Jesus Christ, that's not what's correct. I think that this one right here is speaking Okay, let's see. Uh, Jeremiah thirty one, and then we're gonna get Hebrews eight. Just so, just to show that it's not anything new in Hebrews. It's a, it's a reiteration of the Old Testament. Read. Look at Jeremiah chapter thirty one, starting at verse thirty one. Bring it out. Behold, the days. Come, with, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Okay, ahead. the house of Israel, and who else? And with the house of Judah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out. Are you filming out. these minors? Yeah, 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 yes, we're recording. Okay, you don't have permission to film these minors. I'm um, sorry. You, you guys are in public. Okay. You guys don't have, you don't any have permission to, to film these minors. Okay, so if just turn it that way. No, no, no. If, if, if that's the case, <laughs> okay. students, we gotta hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We'll turn it. I'm sorry. We will, ma'am. We will turn it. You just said just to turn it, right? No. I will turn it. Is it my phone, now? ma'am? I will turn it. Don't find a reason to leave. I'm gonna take my students, and we're gonna leave. Ma'am, you just said all I have to do is turn it, right? I'm gonna turn it. Turn it. Turn it. No, no, no. I just turned it. You just said it's not turned. I turned it. Guys, I turned, ma'am, I turned it. Ma'am, I turned it. Are you just going to ignore me? Go I'm going to show you guys lunch. something about what your teacher's not telling you. Proverbs 28 1. You, you gotta, if you're going to teach them the Bible, you actually have to have them stand on it wholeheartedly with boldness and with pure faith. So, so, so here's the thing. You ask me to do something, I oblige, and now you want to find an excuse and a reason to leave anyway? Come on, Jesus Christ. Read. 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 Look at Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. Bring it out. The you know. wicked flee when no man pursue it. When you want to find an, a, an excuse and a reason to leave and to flee, nobody has persecuted you. You asked me, you said turn it because you can't feel minors. I made a statement that said you can't you can't have no right to privacy in a public place, and I still obliged and turned the camera. And you still found a reason to leave. I'm yelling? Well, the word, the word of Jesus Christ said his voice was at the sound of many waters. Isaiah 58 and 1 says, cry aloud, spare not, and lift up your voice like a trumpet, and spare no man. Bring it That's out. right. Yeah, from the top. Uh, it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 1. Bring it out. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. Read. But the righteous are bold as a lion. So where's your boldness in the faith of Jesus Christ? I'm standing up, Mark. I appreciate you for standing up. I appreciate you for standing up. That's why she said you're speaking truth. Right? So let's go back to Jeremiah 31. Now that's crazy. No, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay because it's all the same. It's, it all pertains to the same thing, right? The new covenant, salvation, the gospel, these are all things that coincide with each other. Read Jeremiah 31 31 again so we can get back to uh, Hebrews 8 chapter and then get Hebrews 10 for them. Read. So look at Jeremiah chapter 31, chapter, verse 31. Bring it out. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a, a new covenant with the, the house, house of Israel, Israel and with the house of Judah. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Not according to when they were brought out of Egypt. This is a new one with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Read. Which my covenant they break. So when you asked me earlier, you said, isn't everyone in captivity to sin? No, everyone, is, I mean, the Israelites are in captivity as according to the covenant that they broke. And we're going to read that in Hebrews. Read. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Uh -huh. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So we read in Jeremiah when, when the new covenant was spoken of and introduced by the prophets of old. Now let's go to Hebrews, the eighth chapter, and then we'll get 10 right after, right? Bring it out. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Bring it out. Six. Verse 6. Yeah, but, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. You ready? You ready? I'll wait for you to go. You go, you go. 
No, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling up something else. Okay, read it again. It says, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry uh -huh. by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. A better covenant, the new covenant, read. Which was established upon better promises. Uh -huh. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. That's why the new covenant is not going to be made according to the ones that was made with the fathers when he was brought when they were brought out of the land of Egypt, right? If there if the old one was faultless, no place have, should have been sought for the second. Read. For finding fault with them, uh -huh. he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The same thing we just read in Jeremiah. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. And that's when they went into captivity. And if you know the history of the Bible, whenever the children of Israel would disobey God, he would send them into captivity. And then, guess what? He would send them saviors. Right? Now we believe wholeheartedly that Jesus Christ is the ultimate savior, right? He is the he is the he is the highest, the most purest form of a savior, but he is doing the exact same thing that prophets of old and saviors of old have done. Salvation or the saviors were going to end with him, but it's not anything new for the children of Israel and with their history. You believe Jesus is the Son of God, right? Yes. There's, there's for, uh, only, the only, the, only the children, the only children, of, the children Israel of Israel who are blind, broken-hearted, poor, and in captivity. But not for everyone. Not everyone, because I, because because every you would have to showcase according to the linear uh, uh, story of the Bible that the all mankind was blind, poor, captivity, and broken-hearted. Do you not believe that? All no. mankind is no. no. The Bible does not teach that. Do you think the Gentiles, like, had to figure it out? Or? What do you guys think about, what do you guys think about Paul? Like Paul's we, we read Paul earlier in Hebrews the 11th chapter. After he read Paul in Romans, what, 8? 7. Okay. So, yeah. So, like, just everything about Gentiles. Say it again? Everything about the Gentiles? What do you mean, everything about the Gentiles? Like, Jesus came for the Jew and the Gentile. Correct. You got it here? Correct. Oh, Jesus came for the Jew and the Gentile. Correct. Wait, so like who is the Gentile? The, the Gentile are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. <laughs> only though. Yeah. Only. The lost that's, sheep of the house of Israel. And we can demonstrate that too if you want. Yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, get Hebrews 10 for them because they wanted that right. Start at what? Six? But you see in Hebrews 8, it says the new covenant is with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. Is it with anybody else? Watch this. Is, 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 the, is, the, is the new covenant with anybody else outside of the... The Greek. Uh huh. So like the Jew first and also the Greek. Correct. So No no no, but but here's the thing. No, no but watch this. No no wait wait wait. Hey listen, you gotta understand something. When you guys go there to say the Jew first and then the Greek, are you guys Greek? No. So yeah. But you know it means it's talking about the Gentiles. But right there when it says the Greek, that adds more context to support our point. Because you have to understand the history of the Israelites under the Greek captivity. Do you guys, do you guys, are you guys familiar of, of the Greco uh, uh, captivity? No, not the Greco-Roman, but the Greek captivity that the children of Israel was in. You guys, are you guys familiar with the Maccabees? You guys heard about the Maccabees. So the Maccabees were in captivity under the Greeks, right? They came, sacked the temple, turned it into a whorehouse and just a father, right? The, 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 uh, the abomination that causes desolation. This is during the time of the Greeks. So there were a lot of Israelites that were persecuted and forced to not call themselves Jews. They could be killed just by simply acknowledging that they were Jew. So a lot of them left that in fear, and some even left it just being allured by the freedoms and the liberties that the Greeks had. I'm sure you guys know about all the freedoms and liberties of the Greeks, right? All of the sexual liberation, all of the, they call it uh, um, antinomianism, right? The lawlessness of the Greeks. Damn near every captivity that the children of Israel was in was lawless. They were always contrary to the laws of God. It's God, you're right. Exactly. So, so, when we read in the New Testament, these Gentiles that these disciples and the apostles had to go out and bring to Jesus Christ was the Israelites that had fell away from who they are, from either being a lord and making that choice, or from uh, in fear of persecution. And this is history to back this up. But when you, now I, I, know, I know you're not disputing, I'm just kind of giving our position on it to say, when you 
don't have a, a, a good understanding of that, what they call intertestimonial period, from the Old Testament, the end of Malachi, which is during the Persian and the Mede captivity, and you jump the Greek captivity and automatically go straight to the Roman captivity, then you read it says, well, salvation is for the Gentiles now and for the Greeks. And you say, see, that's for everybody. No, you're missing a good portion and a good chunk of history that you have to put with. I guess, so my, so I, I take this completely literally. Literally. Uh, yeah. I'm glad. But also, did they but, said, "Oh, it's more horrible." Well, well, but do you guys believe that a lot of this stuff can be poetic? Yeah. And it's talking about like, so when we hear Greek, is that only talking about the Greeks, or is that also talking about anyone who's just not Jewish? Um, here's the thing: all twelve tribes are not Jewish. All Israelites. If, if you want to go back, Abrahamic. With me, well, I'm not gonna say Abrahamic because because from Abraham, from Abraham comes Ishmael. From Abraham comes Esau. You see what I'm saying? All yeah, but down, things. Down, so, down the line, you're talking about the 12. I'm talking, the 12, about, the, I'm talking about the 12 tribes. I'm talking about those that was delivered out of the, out of the land of Egypt, led through the wilderness for 40 years, given the promised land, the land from the Nile to the Euphrates, flowed with milk and honey, and the covenant that was made with them, and the responsibility that they had to uplift and to uphold the laws of God. And if they would not do that, God says, I will blind you, I will bring you into captivity, I will bring you and make you poor so that you're the borrower and not the lender, and I will right. cause you to be broken hearted. This is all in the Bible. I'm right there with you. Right, so, so when we, again, follow the history leading up to Jesus Christ, how do we get this idea that he's for everybody when even he at his own mouth says, I'm only sent to the white sheep of the house of Israel? I don't know who your boy Mike is, so I'm saying that, I'm saying, I'm saying I, I don't know who he is. I'm not, I can't look at this man's appearance and to say, see, he's not. All I'm saying is, is that before we start to pinpoint and point out individuals, let's establish the, what we're going to build on the foundation. That salvation and the gospel and everything pertaining to this Bible is for the Israelites. Do you guys know what the word is? You guys are bouncing a lot of questions off. You guys know what the word Bible means? It, it goes back to Latin word biblios, right? This is why uh, in Spanish a library is called the biblioteca, right? It just means a composition or a collection of many books, right? And when you talk about the collection of these many books, it's what? Of what? The history of the Israelites. Right? Um the first five books. The first five books in the Bible is considered what? The laws of or the books of Moses. Moses was an Israelite. He got this information in the mount when he went and got the commandments from God. He brought back down these, these records. These are Israelites. Then it goes what? Into Joshua. And then them leading him into the promised land. This is Joshua's records, right? And then it goes to all of the different kings and all of the different judges. judges. Of yeah. who? Of Israel. This entire book is about Israel. That's and for right. some reason, people have right. turned it into this humanitarian book. But it's until Jesus comes. Right? You say it's I until mean, Jesus comes? Well, well, I don't know if you were here earlier, but we read Jesus says, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. But it's, that's not like his only go to. He, 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 he talks to the, the woman at the well. She's, Who was the woman at the well? She was a woman from uh, Samaria. She was from Samaria. Exactly. Do you got, hold on. Do you guys it's, know where Samaria is? It's, it's, it's in. No, yes, it's in Israel. Israel. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But, but, yeah, I know. Well, I'm I'm on, no, this is so. I'm gonna show you something. Bro. I'm gonna show you something because the woman at the well literally said something. I want to show you. John four. Start at twelve. Go ahead. The book of Saint John, chapter four, and verse twelve. I, I, like, I like this. You guys like discussing the Bible like this? This is good, man. I, I just got goosebumps. I, got goosebumps. Go ahead. I love John. Says, Art thou greater than our? Start earlier. Start at uh, where? Where it starts ten. Go ahead. Verse ten. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest. Uh uh. Well. Go up to the point to where it says in Samaria. Seven. seven, go ahead. Verse seven, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Because remember, Samaria is in the northern part of Israel. Right. So when you understand the history- the what temple is, bro. It's like no, 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 no. I want you to understand something. Yeah, go. It's in the northern part of Israel. If you understand the history of the children of Israel, the, the nation was split. That's why in the New Testament you hear so much about the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. Because the northern part of Israel, the Jews were the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom of Israel was went into captivity to the Assyrians, and according in those same records, the, the Greek during the time of the Greek the captivity, right, yeah. they went into another country where never mankind dwelt. So it was a issue between the two they were fighting they were feuding there was a a, a a middle wall of partition paul speaks about this in ephesians the second chapter the point that i'm making is when the woman says how are you speaking unto me jesus 
I'm just simply a woman of the of, of Samaria and you're a Jew. You know that that's not a thing. That's that's supposed to be forbidden. It wasn't according to the laws of God, but it was according to the traditions of men. Let's keep reading. It says, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Uh -huh. Jesus ahead. answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God. If you knew the gift of God, the gospel, go ahead. And who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink. And who it is that says unto you, give me drink. If only you knew, go ahead. Thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, you remember earlier when we read Matthew 15? And I pointed out with the Canaanite woman, he ignores her. But with the Samaritan woman, he's ministering unto her. I hear you. I'm saying you see how he deals differently. And and when I was saying earlier, when you rush things, right, we tend to skip over stuff. I understand you had to make your point because you might have left. But in between verse 23 where we stop or 24 where we stop and 28. Christ calls that woman a dog. He says, it's not good to take the children's meat and to give it unto the dogs. But you see who he's given the meat unto, the Samaritan woman. But then there's resolution with that. Um, again, Christ is not above being appreciative and, and, and showing respect. We're not saying that Christ is above. Matter of fact, get that uh, in, in, in Exodus where it says uh, uh, he gives the strangers food and drink. Bring it out. Can I, well, can I just... Because she asked for a crumb, you know what I mean? And that's literally what, what so ends up happening. If I can just... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's finish it. Read in this real quick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah let's and and when, when we're done with uh, John 4, then you got the floor. Go ahead. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence, from whence then ha hast thou th that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? She acknowledges that she's an Israelite by calling her father Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He is the patriarch of the 12 tribes. Right. So when you said, well, he spoke unto everyone, even the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman out of her own mouth just said, her father is Jacob. Go ahead. Right. You got the floor. That's pretty. That's actually pretty good. It is very good. Check this out. It's but, just but, in but, the Bible. I was Listen. literally just going to do this. This is on the, like, you just open it up. It's on the same page. It's like the, you got something for this. I know it. But how do you, for God so loved the world? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, come on, guys. Like, like, no, 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 guys, I, guys, stop I, doing that. Man. I want to know what you guys are talking it. about because we we believe this is for everyone. I know. And I know. If, if whoever, this is not whoever believes in the Son, shall not perish but have eternal life. Like, what do we do with a verse like that? But then also, if if you guys have an answer to that, what do we do? Just what do you, I'm about to say, what do you do with a verse like that? You do not eisegete that verse, right? You cannot just use one verse out of an entire history book and records and base it off of, and base your salvation and faith off of that. Ain't no way, Jump up to verse 14 and read that. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. As what? This is context, correct? Just let me know. Bro, this, let me, and that's a good story. Let me know when I'm cheating you. My name is Taz, right? Hey, what's up, bro? What's going on? What's your name? I'm Trace. Trace, all right? Listen, and you were? Ethan. Ethan. Trace and Ethan. Watch this. So as if I, Hold on. If I ever cheat, you say, Taz, you cheated me. Is 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 verse fourteen establishing the context? Yeah. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Okay, go So ahead. must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Correct. Bro, that's going back to Moses. It's wait, 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 wait. So who was in the wilderness with Moses? Bro, I know, but that's the we're talking about the Remember, world. Remember, you told me you right? said I take this book literal. But it says so do I. Yes, so whoever whoever is not just the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The context is as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Right. So you guys have to take into consideration the audience that he's talking to. Well, let's talk. Well, yeah, I know, but that's. So again, if we all have our, if, if you guys are all in a, you guys are all in a, in a, in a, in a Bible camp, right? Yeah. And um, you guys as instructor, right? Says, whosoever among you goes down to talk to those guys, you're in trouble. I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just, I didn't, I was using an example. I was using an example. I was using an example. I'm saying that the audience that you would say that to are those that pertain to be under your authority. You see what I'm saying? So 
so so you're responsible for them and that's the audience that you would make that claim to people that aren't under your supervision it doesn't pertain to them so the audience is important and it establishes the context of who the audience is when it says as moses did in the wilderness right. who was in the wilderness with moses the israelites right yeah but so know, as but they did as it as it was lifted up in the wilderness but dude i'm sorry even in your didn't moses didn't moses say whosoever uh, looks at this staff well, I, i'm i'm trying to talk you i'm sorry ahead, the mic, bro. um so like the, the, in the context you're saying it it ends with the world like, Correct. So, I, so I'm, I understand this context. But honestly, dude, Would see, you Jesus me? being the serpent posted up on the on the pole Correct. to save everyone from their snake bites and sin. I understand. That's watch, incredible. Watch this. Watch this. Would you believe me if I showed you that the Bible literally says that Israel is the world? Would, would that be bizarre? That I have a position. I have a position They say that the gospel of salvation is for everybody. I mean, for Israel. You guys say it's for everybody. And you say, it says the world. So I shouldn't be able to showcase where the world is Israel, right? I shouldn't be able to do that. You're going to do it. Yeah, Ethan, no, it's ah! And, and, and you said it too. You said, you said, I know you have something for this, right? You got something for this, I know it. You got something for this, I know it. You, we're reading the same book, man. I got you. I, I, here's, I, I think we just have different perspectives on what this is referring to. I, now watch this. I, 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 clearly we have different perspectives. Right. I would say that the difference between me and you is that I consider more of the Bible to develop my perspective and you're just jumping to the back of the book. No, 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 no. I, I promise you, bro. I, I've actually going through like cover to cover back and forth. I'll finish it. I'm like listening to it right. as it goes through. I'm obsessed with this. That's why the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Let me show you Isaiah 45 and 17. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Oh, no. I want Ethan to hear this. You want me to... It's not necessarily for... The, the microphone is not for me to try to speak over you, but we do recognize that this gospel You're has the to message ex out, explain yeah. more than just this group right here. I don't have to have the microphone. Wait, wait, wait. Right out. Wait, can I ask you a question up? about that? Yeah. Why does the message have to expand if the gospel is only for those of Israel? Because the children of Israel are throughout the four corners of the earth. If you read in the book of Isaiah, it literally says that, I, that the Israelites are going to be scattered everywhere. This is why the Great Commission says go into all yeah. nations preaching, because out of Israel is going to okay. come all nations. As also, I, to the I, I agree with you too. I, 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 did, I mean, you, I, I mean you, you read Paul, and you, I think one of the greatest tragedies is that we we have people who are still ascribing to the Jewish religion after their Messiah is gone. Right. That's a huge disservice. Right, but the Jewish religion at the time was a perverse religion. You read, you read about that. You read about that in Matthew 15, Mark 7. You know, what I mean, he literally says, "You put your traditions of your fathers over the laws of God," and that's what Christ is bringing back—the righteousness of God versus people's own private interpretation. Get that Isaiah 45. Let me get you down there. You brought that out. God yeah, yeah. of the world. Sure, 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 sure. You said it says the world. You yeah. gotta be there. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Bring it out. But Israel shall be saved. Shall be what? Shall be saved. Shall be saved. Go ahead. In, in the, the Lord, Lord with an everlasting salvation, salvation Israel. Go ahead. ye shall not be, be ashamed, ashamed nor, nor, nor confounded, confounded world, world without end. end. Is that bizarre that that's in the Bible? That it says Israel is going to be saved with an everlasting salvation, and they are a world without end. Sure, if, yeah, if they, they believe in Jesus. You no, know, watch this. So when we read John 3, 16, and we jump up to verse 14, as Moses lifted the serpent mm. in the wilderness to the world, okay. Israel, according to Isaiah, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up to Israel the same way. Isaiah 45, 17. Now he asked a question and said, well, why would the message need to be spread out to, 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 to every, uh, everywhere if it's only for the children of Israel? Deuteronomy 30 from the top. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 from the top. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. Who is thee? The children of Israel. This is the book of Deuteronomy, right? This is two chapters after they got the stipulation. If you follow me, I'll bless you. If you disobey me, I'll curse you. He says, okay, read it again from the top. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, read the blessing and the curse Go ahead. which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. Because the punishment of disobeying the uh, God, the curses were going to happen, and they were going to be driven to all nations. Go ahead and shall return unto the Lord thy God. And, and these Israelites that are driven there have to return unto God. 
That's why Christ said, go unto all nations and preach the gospel, right. making disciples, because right. that's where the Israelites were. And we read this here in Deuteronomy. That's why I said, I take in consideration Deuteronomy to understand Matthew. I take in consideration Isaiah to understand John. Go ahead. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. You see how very specific and exclusive it is? He's already prophesying the salvation of the children of Israel in Deuteronomy after the curses would happen to them. So if I take that in consideration, then how do you guys you utilize say, wait, that? Wait, can you say that just that children verse again with us? Verse 2. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, mm. thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. The children, I mean the, the, the people of Israel and their children have to obey the voice of God. Yeah. How do we know that that's Jesus Christ? Because earlier in Deuteronomy 18 and 18, he says, I will raise up a prophet from among your brethren, like unto Moses, and I will put my words in his mouth, and you have to listen to but I'm with you. No, I like hey, bro. It. I like it. You're, you're, all I'm you're saying is, the Bible. All I'm agree. saying is, all I'm saying is, now what you guys have gotten amongst your Bible camp is some homework, because now you guys have to answer for scriptures like this in order to make relevance and to make sense of your perspective and your point of view as it pertains to the gospel. That's all. Yeah. So, Con. I, I know that there's. I mean, if, I believe this is history too. Right. You're talking about it being a collection of books. We're on the same page of that. Absolutely. But then we also hear some very specific, you know, language about places and peoples. Like what? I think that's completely correct, too. I'm saying, like what? I believe that you're talking about the Israelites. Yeah. And that makes sense. In and, Deuteronomy, and, that's, and, that's and, all they were. And, and Jesus Christ was talking about the Israelites. I just, I just think that's what and Paul was talking about. Listen, I was going to say, and Paul was talking about the Israelites. And Peter was talking about the Israelites. And James was talking about the Israelites. This entire record of the Is of, or about the Israelites. Every, yeah, I, I, every I also prophet, agree with that. Every prophet in this, can you show me a prophet in this Bible that's not an Israel? No, that's how it works. Because it's for them. <laughs> that's my point. All right. You see what I'm saying? Even when you look at what we call... Uh, um, every argument know, they have, <laughs> you have, they have already worked out an argument as to why they're wrong. And they're not going to listen to you. Wait, 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 wait. We're not, we haven't listened to them? No, because everything... Um, in Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission, Right. So, you know, when he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, how do you say that? Because all nations is not just Israel. Israel is one nation. We just read to you, Israel is in all nations. We just read that to you. So that's how I will reconcile them, right? That as they go and, and make disciples of all Now watch this. Give me uh, Acts 2. Acts 2 and 5. Uh, I, I, I got you. I got you, man. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Pass. Pass. T-A-Z. That's fine. But I wanted to Acts 2. So here's the thing. All I'm saying is that we, we're providing scriptures for you guys to say when you go out and you evangelize and you go defend the gospel and contend for the faith, you have to be able to take these verses in consideration. Otherwise, you're kind of left stuck. I got you. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, go ahead. Jews. Jews. Devout men. Devout men from where? Out of every nation under heaven. So that's why the Great Commission was like that. But let me share one more with you before you guys go. Let's go back one chapter. So if the Great Commission was what you guys say it is, that means the disciples understood that, correct? So let's see what the disciples and how they felt when Christ appeared unto him after his death, burial, and resurrection. Acts 1 and 5. This is the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 5. Get out. For John truly baptized with water. Go ahead. But ye shall baptize with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Not many days hence. Uh -huh. When they therefore were come together. When they, the disciples, right, or the apostles, when they therefore were come together. Go ahead. They asked of him, saying. They asked of him, Jesus, saying what? Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Even after Jesus had given his charge of the Great Commission, even after he had been persecuted, crucified, died, buried, and resurrected, when he appeared unto the children or his disciples, they asked him, are you now at this time going to restore again the kingdom to who? Not to all men, but to Israel. And what does he say after like, what is Jesus responding? Go ahead. That's a Verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, 
but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria uh -huh. and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uh -huh. And into uttermost parts of the earth. We already established that the children of Israel there. His response was, you're asking me, is it this is, is now the time where you're gonna restore the kingdom of Israel? He says it's not for you to know the time. Like, but he didn't all, he also didn't say that it wasn't. Uh, no, he had already said that while he was living. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He already said that while he was living. So I hear you guys. Remember the gospel is to the poor, the brokenhearted, the captive, and the blind. So and, and, and we can show you verses, I know you guys got time, but we can show you verses where it literally says that Israel pertains to all of those different things. The, but all the prophets literally line that out so yeah. that when we get to the gospel of Christ, how can we think that it's anybody else? If you guys believe that it is, you guys have to have those things lined up according to 1 Peter 3 15. Just prepare yourself when you go out there and fight the great fight. Hey, you know more about the Bible than most Christians. So. <laughs> That's not good. No, it's not. That's not good. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I enjoyed this. It tested me. Now I'm, now I'm so, going to share one more thing with you guys. John 14, 26 says, And the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, right, shall teach you all things and bring all things unto your remembrance whatsoever Christ has said unto you. So if you guys feel like you guys have the gospel and you guys can't go into his words, you got to look yourself in the mirror. Examine yourself. Paul spoke about that and the apostles as well. Right? That's right. You guys have a good one. You guys, you guys mind if we pray for could you guys pray for us? We pray for you real fast. Uh, well, according to Matthew 6, we'll do it respectively uh, in private, and we will be rewarded openly. Okay, right, so we got you. Bless you guys. Absolutely. Thank Have you. a good one. Crab Yashiro! Crab Yashiro! For all his sons and his daughters, won't feel the sins with the faces, iniquities of they father, bloodthirsty is of our nation, not for living water, waiting to put that work in, Hamashiach gives that order, prepare slaughter. For all his sons and his daughters, won't feel the sins with the faces, iniquities of they father, bloodthirsty is of our nation, not for living water, waiting to put this work in, Hamashiach gives that order.